Well, we saw yesterday that there are dozens of scriptures in the New Testament that quote an Old Testament passage or verse and claim that it's being fulfilled by the event recorded in the New Testament text. We're going to be looking at these instances that use the words, this is to fulfill what was spoken through the prophets, or words very similar to that. Now, in yesterday's study, we looked at a specific example from Matthew chapter 4 and Isaiah chapter 9. Matthew chapter 4 verse 12 said, Now, when Jesus heard that John had been taken into custody, he withdrew into Galilee, and leaving Nazareth, he came and settled in Capernaum, which is by the sea in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali. This was to fulfill what was spoken through Isaiah the prophet. Now, the passage directly quotes verses 1 and 2 from Isaiah chapter 9. Clearly, according to the inspired writing of Matthew, this was a fulfillment taking place of something that was written some 700 years prior. In the same passage, there's the messianic prophecy of the birth of Messiah and the launching of his never-ending kingdom in Isaiah chapter 9 verses 6 and 7. Now, to continue in the passage, what is really amazing, and it ties into the prophecy Jesus gave of the coming destruction of Jerusalem and the temple in the Olivet Discourse, Isaiah chapter 9, verses 8 through 14, speaks of a coming destruction of Israel. Now, it's important to put the discussion into the historical perspective. The Old Testament prophets warned the people of the northern kingdom of Israel, of an impending judgment that was going to come upon them because of the rampant idolatry, se uh, sexual immorality, and the shedding of innocent blood. Now, their judgment actually came in 722 B.C. when the northern kingdom of Israel was destroyed by the Assyrian army. Now, other prophets refer to this as the issuance of of a certificate of divorce. The, the warnings were then issued to the southern kingdom of Judah of a similar judgment that was going to come against them for the same reasons. And in 605 BC, the city of Jerusalem was attacked by the Babylonians, captives were taken, the temple was looted, and a puppet king was set in place. And in 586 BC, the Babylonians destroyed the city of Jerusalem, and the temple. Now, the warnings of these events by the prophets are recorded, and the subsequent fulfillment of those prophecies are also recorded in the scriptures and in secular history. But Matthew now refers to Isaiah 9 and declares its fulfillment in the life and ministry of Jesus. There's the messianic prophecy of his birth, and it's immediately followed by a prophetic word of judgment. So let's look at it. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 8 through 14. The Lord sends a message against Jacob, and it falls on Israel. And all the people know it, that is, Ephraim and the inhabitants of Samaria, asserting in pride and in arrogance of heart, the bricks have fallen down, but we will rebuild with smooth stones. The sycamores have been cut down, but we will replace them with cedars. Therefore, the Lord raises against them adversaries from Raisin and spurs their enemies on, the Arameans on the east and the Philistines on the west, and they devour Israel with gaping jaws. In spite of all this, his anger does not turn away, and his hand is still stretched out. Now, it's not stretched out like this, it's stretched out like this. Yet the people do not turn back to him who struck them, nor do they seek the Lord of hosts. So the Lord cuts off head and tail from Israel, both palm branch and bulrush in a single day. The head is the elder and honorable man, and the prophet who teaches falsehood is the tail. For those who guide this people are leading them astray, and those who are guided by them are brought to confusion. 
Now, here's a dilemma for us as we seek to accurately interpret the Scriptures. We know that verses 1 through 7 of Isaiah chapter 9 find their fulfillment in Jesus. There's no, de there's no debate on that. that. That is exactly what took place, and that's exactly what Matthew states in Matthew chapter 4. But what about the rest of the chapter of Isaiah chapter 9? Is it coincidental that in a passage that prophesies of the coming of Messiah, who will establish his everlasting kingdom, a kingdom that will know no end, the very next verse and series of verses speaks of a complete destruction of Israel. Now, I've had people claim that the passages that speak of an end-time destruction of Jerusalem and its temple actually have what they call a dual fulfillment. Yes, they claim it was fulfilled in 70 AD, but the 70 AD destruction of Jerusalem and the temple is actually a picture of what will happen at the end of the world. So in effect, really, when you get right down to it, these people are arguing for triple fulfillment. 586 BC, 70 AD, and then some nebulous point in our future some 2,000 years later. The destruction of Jerusalem in the temple in 70 AD was a long prophesied event that brought about the end of the old covenant and the full realization of the new covenant, the long awaited and long anticipated messianic kingdom. Now the apostle Paul summarizes the history of Exodus in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 where he says, I do not want you to be unaware brethren that our fathers were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea and they all ate the same spiritual food and they all drank the same spiritual drink for they were drinking from a spiritual rock which followed them and the rock was Christ. And then he describes the judgment that came upon them for their rebellion, their idolatry, their immorality. And then he says this, now these things, this judgment, happened to them as an example, and they were written for our instruction. Now, the our instruction is not you and me. The our instruction is the people that Paul was speaking to and writing to. These things happened and was written for our instruction upon whom the ends of the ages have come. Paul wasn't saying that this was written so that the end of the world, some 2,000 plus, 10,000, however many thousand years into the future, he was stating that the end of the ages had come upon that generation and this warning of judgment was for them. The end of the ages had come upon those first century Jewish followers of Jesus as the Messiah. The presence of Messiah was the fulfillment and a key component of it was the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple. That is the fulfillment. The fulfillment is not a picture of some future fulfillment. That was it. The appearance of Jesus on the scene in the first century, his miraculous conception and birth, his life and ministry filled with supernatural miracles, works which no one else performed, his crucifixion, and his resurrection marked the promised salvation of the righteous remnant of Israel and simultaneously the promised judgment of the apostates in the complete and total destruction of Jerusalem and its temple. Well, I hope you'll pay close attention to the words fulfilled and in fulfillment of. We're going to continue to break this down over the next few weeks. Now again, I hope, I hope 
This has spurred you to wrestle with the scriptures, to think about why you believe what you've always believed. And I hope you'll be with me again right here on Monday morning as we continue our study of the Messianic kingdom and its fulfillment in Jesus, the promised Messiah of Israel and the Savior of the whole world. Why not click on the subscribe button on the lower right corner of your screen and you'll be notified in YouTube whenever a new video gets posted. And if you're watching on Facebook, consider sharing this on your wall and invite your friends to watch it. I hope you'll go out and make today a great day and I hope you have a safe and blessed weekend.